Okay? All right, now let's talk about building on this thing. Beta oxidation. This is now talking about fats. How are we going to get energy from fats? Okay, I showed you what we do with sugars. Now, fats. This is beta oxidation. A triglyceride is a fat. It's made up of, MUO, is made up of one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. We talked about that before. That's why we did all the chemistry before. We're building on this thing. So you have a glycerol molecule over here, all right, has some carbons in there, and then we have long chains, long fatty acid chains. They could be anywhere, I don't know, they could be three carbons long or they could be 30 carbons long. The more carbons, more energy you can get, right, and we talked about saturated fats and unsaturated fats and so forth. So what happens here in the cytoplasm, that's going to be broken up. It'll be broken up with one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. The glycerol could actually be changed back into glucose. Ooh, we'll talk about that too. How do you make glucose from glycerol, from other things that are not glucose. You can do that. It's a process called gluconeogenesis. Okay? But these long chains, these long fatty acid chains, are crucial to get energy. Those long chains can enter the mitochondria. You get a lot of ATP from fats. Unfortunately, a Snickers bar has a lot of fats in it. It would be nice if you could eat that and turn it right into energy. But you don't change that into energy right away. I mean, you do, but you're not going to use the energy. You're not going to eat a Snickers bar and then run a marathon to burn it all off. You usually eat a Snickers bar and then sit on the couch. So therefore, that, fat, that, that energy turns into fat on your own body. That's why people are getting fatter in America, all right? About a third of our country is obese, and it's getting higher. So it's just that the amount of energy that's been put into the system is not equal to the same amount of energy that's leaving the system. You're putting in 2,000 calories, but you're only burning 1,200 calories. So where does the 800 calories go? Into your fat, okay? So the glycerol part can be made into glucose. It's a process called gluconeogenesis. The name kind of tells you what goes on. Gluco meaning glucose, neo meaning new, genesis means generation, synthesis. So you're making, so it's new synthesis of glucose. The fatty acids, they transform into acetyl-CoA. They enter the mitochondria and they make acetyl-CoA. Here. The glycerol, so you have this, I'm just going to show, I know people can't see it, but you have this glycerol molecule, three fatty acids, in the cytoplasm, this breaks off, the glycerol turns back into glucose by gluconeogenesis. The fatty acids enter the mitochondria, and we have a process over here called beta-oxidation. 
kind of like what I just can't see in here, it's just what I did over here. So you have this triglyceride. Glycerol changes back to glucose by a process called gluconeogenesis in the cytoplasm. These fatty acids enter the mitochondria, and for every two carbons, we can make an acetyl-CoA. Makes sense. There's two carbons in acetyl-CoA. We're going to take two carbons from fatty acid and turn into this. If you have 16 carbons on a fatty acid, you can make eight acetyl-CoA's. Think of all those acetyl-CoA's that enter here and how much energy you get. It's a big picture. God, someone over here said, you know, they want to see the big picture. There's the big picture. You're seeing this whole thing. I'm not going through to all the little details of all the different reactions. So, beta oxidation. In eukaryotes, you and I, in plants, it happens in mitochondria, but of course, prokaryotes don't have mitochondria, so it happens in the cytoplasm. So it's a process that takes two carbons from these fatty acids and puts them into, or makes them into acetyl-CoA's. And ATP is needed here. So what we're doing here So we're taking fatty acids, some two carbon structures. Every two carbon structures will make this. So carbon structure. Right? Fatty acids, every two carbons. You are going to use, I'm going to get busy in here, but you do need to put in ATP, and ATP comes off plus the inorganic phosphate. But you're also going to make uh, let's just draw this right here. It's gonna be too big if I do this. So ATP needs to go into it, and what comes out of it. is going to be an NADH and an FADH2. You're investing ATP into it, but you're going to get how many ATPs from NADH? Uh, NADH? Three. Three. How many from here? One. Two, right? So you're going to put in one ATP for every two carbons, but you're going to get a whopping five ATPs out of this. And that just comes out of this process here. Then you also make an acetyl-CoA that's going to enter here, and you're going to make all of this. Make sense? 
that's beta oxidation. So you get an NADH over here and an FADH2. Those will be used later on for the ET for the electron transport chain. How many ATPs you get from one fatty acid depends on how long that fatty acid is long. Like I said, if you have if it's 16 carbons on that fatty acid, you're going to make eight, right? If you only have four, you're only going to make two. But it takes every two carbons off a of fatty acid to do that. So this is just kind of showing you, I show you these little things I took from other books. But you have the triglyceride that breaks down into glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerol will turn back into glucose through gluconeogenesis, but it, from glucose then it goes to glycolysis. The same thing I showed up there. It's made by rubic acid, acetyl-CoA, and so forth. The other part of the triglycerides is the fatty acids through beta oxidations will enter where the acetyl-CoA is. And the acetyl-CoA is then going to enter citric acid cycle. Can you believe they have a whole course on this? Biochemistry? So if you do want to go further with this, we do have other classes. Okay? So it's kind of like what I just showed you up there. The beta oxidation, all right, every two carbons will enter and become an acetyl-CoA, which is a two-carbon structure, but ATP needs to be put into it, but you do get NADH and FADH2 here, let alone the acetyl-CoA that enters the citric acid cycle. You get a lot of energy from fat. Things getting bigger. oxidation is. All right, now let's talk about fermentation. What happens if you don't have oxygen? What happens to that pyruvic acid? It builds up and builds up and builds up, but we have another process it could go through. It can't enter the mitochondria. So after glycolysis, if we have oxygen, that pyruvic acid is going to enter the mitochondria and go through the, the citric acid cycle, right? Just what I showed you before. But if there is no oxygen, no oxygen present, then pyruvic acid is going to start building up on the cytoplasm. We've got to do something with it. It has to go through a process called fermentation. Fermentation is the breakup of pyruvic acid, or pyruvate, without oxygen. It occurs in the cytoplasm, no oxygen, so it's an anaerobic thing. Keep in mind that you get no ATP from this. No energy comes out of it. This will also convert the NADH back to NAD+. Plus. So it's going to reverse this back to that. Because this can't enter the electron transport chain because there's no oxygen. All right, so what we have here. 
what's going to happen here is this. This pyruvic acid can't get in there because there's no oxygen. Okay, let's just say there's no oxygen there. So you're going to make something here. This is fermentation. No oxygen that's happening here. Let's say no O2. So fermentation is an anaerobic process. And it goes through a number of steps, but one of the things it's going to produce is something called lactic acid. Now, you also see in the book and other places, it might refer to lactic acid as lactate. It's the same thing for your purposes. Biochemistry, they'll talk about other things when there's not an H on something. But for your purposes, lactic acid and lactate, same thing. Now, this lactic acid is acid. It burns. When you run a marathon, and you start getting that burning sensation over here. It's because you're building up a lot of lactic acid. Why? Because you're using up all your oxygen. So you have this buildup of pyruvic acid that's being made in your cytoplasm of your cells, and it ferments and becomes lactic acid. And it burns, and it makes you tired. That's why you get tired when you run marathons and stuff. This lactic acid is then going to be in the blood. <coughs> So now the lactic acid is in the blood, and it travels to the liver. This is going to be your liver. In the liver, the lactic acid reverts back to pyruvic acid. So the lactic acid changes back to pyruvic acid. And the liver can also do some changes. The liver is the organ that can do this. It will convert pyruvic acid back to glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. No, no, glycolysis is totally different. Glycolysis is taking glucose and breaking it into pyruvic acid. Gluconeogenesis is taking pyruvic acid and making it into glucose. It's the opposite, but the liver is the only place that can do that. This is not a reversible reaction. It has to go through other steps to get that way. So we could use pyruvic acid still to make glucose, but it has to go through this process. How they came up with this is people with no social life. No, I didn't say glycolysis. I said glycol because um, you, know, you talk about the glycosidic acid. Right. Oh, 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 yes, yes. So glycerol, yes, yes. This is what she's asking. Good question. All right. So. Gluconeogenesis, which we'll talk about, is 
taking structures that are not glucose and making them into glucose. Whether you take pyruvic acid and turn into glucose or glycerol and turn into glucose. Mm -hmm. Or taking amino acids and turning them into glucose. Gluconeogenesis is a process that takes organic substances and making them into glucose with a lot of ex a lot of steps in there which we won't go through but that's what gluconeogenesis is it's taking organic structures things with carbon and turning them into glucose gluconeogenesis making new synthesizing new glucose gluco meaning glucose neo meaning new Genesis meaning synthesis. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, what's happening over here? The glucose changes into pyruvate, pyruvate, right? A pyruvic acid by a process called glucose or glycolysis. Talked about that last week, right? It's up there. If there's oxygen, you'll see the pyruvic, the pyruvate processing, which is making acetyl CoA. That's what this is here. So if there is oxygen, it enters the mitochondria, enters the citric acid cycle, electron transport chain. If there is no oxygen, then it's going to go into fermentation. Now, pyruvic acid is converted, depends on what creatures we're talking about. In animals, it turns into lactic acid. That's what, we, what I just showed you. All right, or lactate. In yeast and fungi, they turn into ethyl alcohol. The ethyl alcohol is the thing that some people like to imbibe. Encouraging it, but I'm just saying people like to buy the beer and wine and all that stuff. Can you imagine if our fermentation doesn't turn into lactic acid, but it turns into ethyl alcohol? So that you run a marathon and you get drunk. We don't do that though. We have pain instead. Oh. <laughs> Alright? But that's what happens. But to make alcohol, beer and wine and all that stuff, and yes, believe it or not, root beer too, they need to actually put yeast in the process of making this because that's what's going to happen. It's going to, the yeast is going to ferment and make an ethyl alcohol out of it. You'll learn a lot about this when you take microbiology. Go deal with the bacteria. That's why it's, it's a good idea that after you take this course, Go into microbiology, because you're going to have to redo some of this stuff. So what else happens here is that it oxidizes NADH and to be reused. So what happens also, which I didn't show you here, is that in this process, it's going to convert this back. So this is fermentation. It gets oxidized. And this is part of fermentation also. So that when we have more glucose over here, we could, oxid we could reduce the NAD plus to NADH. So it does that also. Recycling going on. So lactic acid fermentation, when our muscles get no more oxygen or very little oxygen, we get the lactic acid buildup over here. The pyruvate accepts electrons from the NADH to do this. Lactate or lactic acid is made, and so is the NAD plus gets remade. It becomes oxidized. 
as your muscles get more and more oxygen, in other words, you slow down on the marathon and you can breathe more oxygen, the lactic acid will change back to pyruvic acid in the liver. Lactic acid enters the blood and then eventually the liver. All right. So here, glycolysis, taking the one glucose here, breaking up into two pyruvic acids, okay, without oxygen. This goes through a process called fermentation. So these become those. Still a three carbon structure, but the things that are attached to it make the pyruvate look different than the lactate. But it's still a three carbon structure. In glycolysis, the NAD plus gets reduced, but in fermentation, the NADH gets oxidized. So if you can't see what's over here, that's that picture up there. All right? So the pyruvic acid without oxygen, here's their mitochondria. So without oxygen, it'll turn into lactic acid by way of fermentation. The NADHs get oxidized back to NAD+. The lactic acid travels in the blood to the liver, where it gets converted from lactic acid to pyruvic acid. Then gluconeogenesis occurs and changes that pyruvic acid to glucose. The glucose gets put back into the cytoplasm. If you're going into A and P, you need to know how the liver works. We're going to be using these terms in there. That's why this is a basis before you get into A and P. It's going to come back. I know, I teach it. All right, now alcohol fermentation, all right, the pyruvate turns into aldehyde and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide, we're going to actually do this experiment tomorrow. And you're going to see a buildup of carbon dioxide being made, bubbles. That's if this is going to make the alcohol, when, you, when someone, not you, but when someone opens up, let's say, champagne, or they open up beer, right? You see all the foam, all the bubbles there. The bubbles is the carbon dioxide bubbles. So the acetaldehyde changes this, all right? Ethanol is the alcohol itself. Ethyl alcohol is ethanol, all right? And that's made over here, all right? Carbon dioxide, as I mentioned, that's the gas that comes out. That's when champagne, the cork pops open. It's all the build of the carbon dioxide that's in there. When you get into microbiology, you learn a little bit more about other creatures that make things through fermentation. These other things are used to make soy sauce, and tofu, and yogurt, and cheese, and a bunch of other stuff. So again, you go into microbiology, you're going to learn all about that stuff. Don't forget this stuff here. We also have prokaryotes, bacteria that is in our own intestines to help break down certain foods that we can't break down. starts building up certain gases, carbon dioxide gas and methane gas, creates 
flatulations and so forth, right? You know what I'm talking about. Dad wants to pull your finger. So alcohol fermentation, similar picture here. Except here's glyc glycolysis. If we don't have oxygen, the pyruvates turn into ethanol and carbon dioxide. They kind of break them down. They have different enzymes than what animals have. Fermentation is less efficient than cellular respiration, right? It only makes two ATPs. Now, understand that fermentation makes no ATPs. But if you have no oxygen, you only make two ATPs because it's from the process of glycolysis. If you don't have oxygen, this is the only thing that works. And the only place that you're going to make ATP is right here. So. In an anaerobic situation, you're only going to make netwise two ATPs. Doesn't come from fermentation, though. Cellular respiration from one molecule of glucose, if it goes through this whole thing and you count up everything, it's going to make 36 net ATPs. Much, much better. We also have some facultative anaerobes. These are bacteria that do pretty well under anaerobic conditions, but they have certain enzymes that can manage that stuff. So in certain organisms, they can do this. And it can switch from fermentation to aerobic respiration. We don't. We can't live without oxygen. You can't run the marathon making only two ATPs at a time. But the fermentation in these critters over here is what's going to accept the electrons if the oxygens are not present. Our oxygens accept the proton or accept the electrons because we have the electron transport chain. There's the oxygen. That's why we gotta have oxygen is because of electron transport chains. All cells are able to synthesize ATP via the process of glycolysis. In many cells, if oxygen is not present, pyruvate, pyruvic acid, is metabolized in a process called fermentation. By oxidizing the NADH produced in glycolysis, fermentation regenerates NAD+, which can take part in glycolysis once again to produce more ATP. The net energy gain in fermentation is two ATP molecules per molecule of glucose. Fermentation complements glycolysis and makes it possible for ATP to be continually produced in the absence of oxygen. Two common types of fermentation are described here. Alcohol fermentation, which occurs in yeast, results in the production of ethanol and carbon dioxide. Lactic acid fermentation, which occurs in muscle, results in the production of lactate, lactic acid. Let's see the relationship between glycolysis and alcohol fermentation. Glycolysis produces NADH, ATP, and pyruvate, pyruvic acid. If oxygen is not present, NADH cannot be oxidized in the electron transport chain. Without fermentation, the cell would run out of NAD+, bringing glycolysis to a halt. In alcohol fermentation, the pyruvate, pyruvic acid from glycolysis, loses one carbon in the form of carbon dioxide, and the product is then reduced to ethanol by NADH. With the formation of ethanol, NADH is oxidized and becomes NAD+. With a continuous supply of NAD+, glycolysis can continue producing more ATP.
During fermentation, the NADH produced by glycolysis is oxidized, ensuring a continuous supply of NAD plus for glycolysis. Alcohol fermentation occurs in yeast cells. Let's observe the relationship between glycolysis and lactic acid fermentation. Glycolysis produces NADH, ATP, and pyruvate, pyruvic acid. If oxygen is not present, NADH cannot be oxidized in the electron transport chain. Without fermentation, the cell would run out of NAD+, bringing glycolysis to a halt. In lactic acid fermentation, the pyruvate, pyruvic acid from glycolysis, is reduced to lactate, lactic acid, by NADH. With the formation of lactate, lactic acid, NADH is oxidized and becomes NAD+. With a continuous supply of NAD+, glycolysis can continue producing more ATP. During fermentation, the NADH produced by glycolysis is oxidized, ensuring a continuous supply of NAD plus for glycolysis. Lactic acid fermentation occurs in muscle cells. Okay. So gluconeogenesis. Again, gluco, that's glucose, neo, new, genesis, Formation, birth, right? So it's a new form of glucose that's being formed. This occurs in about, in our liver, about 60% and about 40% in the kidneys. So you can imagine, this is how you got to look into these things you're going to take A and B. If you've got liver disease, kidney disease, you can see why they're not going to be so active as much because they're not going to be able to make new glucose. You see? So gluconeogenesis can make new glucose from glycerol, as we showed you before with the, with the uh, triglyceride, lactate or lactic acid, pyruvate, also amino acids. They can take amino acids and make new glucose. This does require oxygen to do that, though. All right? So it occurs when we have a lot of, um, well, when the glucose levels are very low in our blood and carbohydrate levels are also low in our blood. You'll have to rely on the body to make more glucose. So basically, it's the reverse of glycolysis. But it's not a reversible reaction. There's different enzymes that need to go through the process. But it's taking lactic acid trans and make it into pyruvic acid to make go back to glucose. All right? Non carbohydrate uh, sources, you can make it over here. So glucose to glycogen. Remember glycogen. Glycogen is long chains of glucose. Starch. And that's what we're going to do with today's experiment. Starch is, is glycogen. So we can take glycogen or non-carbohydrate sources and we can make glucose by way of gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis going that way. All right kind of like what I showed you up there earlier, all right, and that's what's happening over here. Remember, it needs oxygen.